Yo, what is going on guys? CW Pokey here back with a brand new episode of VGC 2016 Road to Regionals where we will be battling people on the battle spot ladder trying to get as high up as we can hopefully break top five if possible that's going to be a very tough challenge but we're going to try it out and see if we can make it that far before the Regionals happen which I will be participating in. So without further ado we are going to go into our second day of battles. Now in the first episode we went 2-0 oh, er, oh, not 0-2 oh we went 2-0 beat both players. I did a little bit of off screen training as we find Summer from the US. Oh, there's their, their Tumblr uh, with a rating of 1495. Looks like Summer has a team of Kyogre, Primal Kyogre, Gothitelle, Mega Salamence, Lipard, Eveltal, and Ferrothorn. Now Eveltal is a little scary because I haven't actually analyzed this Pokemon yet. I haven't really looked into what it can do. So I'm actually not too sure how it functions. I know a little bit of what it does. It gets like Sucker Punch, Knock Off, Oblivion Wing, which heals some of its health back, but this team is a little scary, and it does have Trick Room potential with Gothitelle, as well as the uh, the Shadow Tag, so I gotta worry about that. Um, definitely not something I wanna worry about. I think this team isn't going to appreciate a very offensive, you know, um, just downright offensive lead. Ferrothorn is gonna be pretty important here, as well as Crobat on it, or not Crobat, Groudon, because Groudon's gonna be able to handle that Ferrothorn, uh, can win the Weather War against Kyogre, so I think that's a pretty safe lead. If this team is reliant on Trick Room, this is going to be okay because I have, uh, well, if he leads Lipard, Gothitelle, that should be okay. We should figure this out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Let's just go ahead and lead these guys and see what we can do. But I do have to be careful because he can easily get me stuck into the uh, the Shadow Tag. Meanwhile, also get an Encore off onto Lipard. So if I do something like Fake Out Turn 1 onto the Gothitelle to prevent Trick Room coming up, well now the Lipard gets to Encore me. And I can't switch out to get rid of the Encore, so I'll be stuck in a fake out. So I have to be careful about that, but that is okay because we know that information. We know my opponent would most likely go for that. As they go for Lipard and Eveltal, interesting choice here, interesting choice. I don't exactly know what to do here now. I'm a little a little worried about this. I'm kind of worried that my opponent might bait in, you know, he's, he's going to bait a... Uh, um, oh, goodness gracious, what do we do? I feel like they're going to bait a fake out and then switch into Gothitelle, but I don't think so. I think what I'm going to do is just try and get rid of that Lipard. That thing is going to cause some problems. Not too worried about Eveltal. I don't think it has enough power to Oko the Kangaskhan. I guess we'll learn the hard way if it does, but I think we're okay. And I honestly want to go for a Dazzling Gleam here. Just get some heavy damage off onto both these Pokemon. Um, or actually, I should probably just Moonblast, right? Because a Low Kick will take out Lipard. Low Kick will easily take out Lipard. He could fake out the Kangaskhan, but I think he's going to go fake out Xerneas to prevent the... Uh, the what's it called the geomancy from getting set up so let's go ahead and try this so we're gonna mega evolve <laughs> into that nice mega kangaskhan the perfect duo now what does my opponent go for he goes for the fake out which is pretty obvious on to kangaskhan okay so i probably should have used dazzling game as a moon blast goes straight off into that evolto's face that's a moon blast takes it out holy crap man that is a good start that is a very good start all my opponent did was get fake out damage off on me I don't care about that, really. That doesn't matter. Like, Kangaskhan doesn't care. Kangaskhan really doesn't care. As now my opponent has a Ferrothorn, so... Um... Still not a still not a bad spot here. Now, what I can try and do is just force into that... Uh, force that Kyogre in, because I'm sure my opponent has Kyogre in the back. So I think what I want to do is go for the Fake Out here. Or, uh, sorry, the Low Kick. I think... I think Low Kick onto Lipard, followed by um, a Dazzling Gleam, just in case that for some reason doesn't take it out. Really not worried about the uh, the Ferrothorn. We're going to be able to take this out pretty quickly uh, once Groudon switches in. As my opponent does switch out the Lipard into Kyogre. Okay, so that's fine. That's actually fine. It's going to take a Low Kick. It's going to take a Dazzling Gleam. Not going to appreciate either. And now I can win the Weather War by bringing in Groudon. So not worried about that at all. I don't think my opponent really could afford to switch out there. Uh, my opponent already playing from behind pretty heavily. I don't know if my opponent can make any like safe switch-ins. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'm speaking too soon. Low kick gonna connect onto Kyogre, do a pretty decent chunk because it is a very heavy Pokemon. That's a huge chunk, actually. Holy crap, as Dazzling Gleam is gonna hit both of these Pokemon. Get some nice chip damage off into Ferrothorn, not like it really matters. Almost takes out the Kyogre, that is insane. Gyro Ball is going to connect onto Xerneas most likely, yes, and it's probably gonna be enough to take it not out. Wow, we're living, we are living with 8 HP. Incredible, incredible. Xerneas has some pretty decent natural bulk to it, which is pretty good, so... Now I'm in a really good spot, honestly. Uh, I know I outspeed this Kyogre because it can't be Scarfed or anything. So we're just going to go for a Dazzling Gleam, which will take that out easily. And then, you know, Low Kick plus Dazzling Gleam should be able to take out the Ferrothorn. So not bad at all. Like I said, my opponent really couldn't afford the switch out because 
it's not like my opponent had anything that wanted to, to take a Dazzling Gleam and or uh, any move from Kangaskhan, really. So, I think what my opponent should have done is tried to stay in and, uh, I don't even know, but staying in was probably the better option. Maybe try and T-Wave something or, or foul play, I don't know. Um, as Low Kick is going to connect onto that Ferrothorn, going to take it out, it looks like, with a crit. I don't know if that crit really mattered at the end of the day. Uh, it's, I mean, it definitely speeds up this game. But that's all right. That's all right. We were gonna take it out anyways with uh, with Groudon in the back. So not bad. Not bad. And then of course, Dazzling Gleam gonna connect now. Do full damage since it's only gonna be a single target attack. Since there's only one Pokemon on the field, so that is going to easily take out that. And now we just have to worry about a, a Lipard. And I'm pretty sure a Lipard can't uh, can't 4-0 my team at this point. I think we're okay. Um, honestly, I might try and style and go for the uh, you know go for the 4-0 here. And switch out that Xerneas so we don't take fake out damage. Because, <laughs> um, you know, that could happen. Um, my opponent could get one, you know, one free switch in here. We're going to switch into Ferrothorn. That way it takes Iron Barb's damage. Or as my opponent just goes to the forfeit. So, nice 4-1 win to start off the day. Not bad at all. Um, unfortunately, my opponent was under the 1500 rating. I'm hoping we find someone a little bit higher up. That's why I've been doing these practice matches. But that is okay because we're going to go straight into game two. As that was a super fast match in all honesty. So, let's go into game two. If we happen to go through another incredibly fast match like that, maybe we'll do a Game 3. But I intend on most of these episodes being Game 2. So guys, make sure this is a good time. If you do enjoy what you're seeing, if you want to see more of these, make sure you guys go ahead and like the video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. We're going to be doing more of these VGC battles. I want to do some more viewer battles in the near future. As we find uh, Kerikusu, Kerikusu from Japan with a rating of 16 something because I missed it. Oh boy, okay, my opponent has a Talonflame, a Mega Salamence, a Ferrothorn, a Cresselia, Primal Kyogre, and a Xerneas. So this is looking like a very solid team. My opponent in the 1600, so I'm sure they know what they're doing at this point. <sighs> okay, this looks like a very standard, you know, got a lot going for it team. Um, Groudon here is going to be really useful. Can help wall out that Xerneas. Um, can win the Weather War against Kyogre. Can stop um, Fer or, yeah, Ferrothorn and... Um, Really all of his team except for maybe Salamence, maybe Salamence. So I definitely want to bring Groudon. Don't want to lead it though. I don't feel like we're going to need to lead it. Um, Ferrothorn, another really good option here, but I want to be careful again. I, I don't know if I'm ready to lead it necessarily. I'm thinking we go into Kangaskhan as a lead and <laughs> I do this every time, but Xerneas is such a strong lead. They're such a good combo together. I don't see a whole lot that can really stop that lead from the get go. Um, most Talonflames in VGC 16 are tending to be a little bit bulkier running Tailwind, so a little bit of supportive options. So I want to consider that, and I think Kangaskhan is a great way to stop that, as well as Xerneas getting some, uh, you know, chip damage, especially after, um, especially after it gets, you know, uh, Dazzling Gleam and all that stuff. So just a pretty solid lead combination there. I don't think there's a whole lot that can really stop it, but I guess we'll learn. This is what, you know, this is the point of these series, is just to learn to, uh, to see what other people are running. Now the cool thing, this can be a cool or a bad thing depending on what you think of it, but VGC 16 tends to be a fairly narrow metagame so far, so far. There's like 10 to 15 Pokemon that you're seeing on most, if not all, teams. Well, this does sound kind of bad. Early on it's kind of cool because it gives you a little less to worry about at the start and you can just kind of focus on like already figuring out threats, figuring out how to work around them. You don't have to get too creative, don't have to get too crazy. Um, it just leads for a little bit more strategic thinking rather than worrying about what Pokemon to use, if that makes any sense. So, my opponent is going to lead with a Salamence and a Kyogre. Now, this is pretty good here. This is pretty good. I outspeed that Salamence before it Mega Evolves, so that's something to keep in mind. Although, my opponent is highly rated. I think, I think, I think, I think they are going to be smart and protect. It sounds very... Well, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, because what we can do is we can double edge and Dazzling Gleam. We can do both. What Pokemon do I have in the back here? Because my opponent could just double protect, but in which case we should be okay. So I'm still going to do that. I think a double edge. Um, actually, let's low kick. Let's low kick in case... Oh no, I want a double edge because I want to be able to take out that Kyogre just in case it, it stays in. I'm really worried he's going to switch on to Ferrothorn, but we'll see. We'll learn. He doesn't switch out. Okay, that's good. Now, he Mega Evolves here. Does he protect? If he doesn't protect, we might just take out this Mega Vents in one turn. I actually had another match that just happened like that, where my opponent didn't want to protect it, and we took it out straight away with a Dazzling Gleam. So, maybe we can have a repeat of that? I don't know, but we're going to Mega Evolve as well. Get that nice Mega Kangaskhan out there. What does my opponent do? 
Oh, he has the double edge. Oh, 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 okay. That hurt, but that's really good because now it's definitely going to faint to a Dazzling Gleam. Also, it was faster. Maybe I am wrong about my Salamon speed tier. Maybe it's like 100 or something. I don't know. I could have sworn it was 95 before Mega... No, it's 100 before Mega Evolving. I'm foolish. Okay, so double edge is going to connect here. How much is this going to do? It's actually not going to take it out. I... We take those! All right, it does take it out with a crit. Holy crap. Okay, I feel kind of bad about that because an origin pulse would have put me into some pretty bad... A uh, pretty bad position, but hey, you know, it's it's the game, right? It's the game. Uh, this, this is how it goes. I've lost plenty of tournament matches through crits to paralysis. It, it happens. So my opponent now has Cresselia and Talonflame. So I'm feeling pretty good here. Feeling pretty good. Uh, question is, what do I want to focus on first? Honestly, really thinking about that Talonflame, because that is the only offensive threat that he really has on this team. Cresselia can't do too much. The, the rest of my team will be able to take it out. So I think what we'll do here is uh, probably sack the Xerneas should he choose to, you know, get damage off. And we're just going to go for a straight up uh, Moonblast and Double Edge onto it as my opponent just goes straight for the forfeit. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Okay. Well, in this case, in this case, this won't happen very frequently, ladies and gentlemen. But we will be doing a third game <laughs> because we are just sweeping right now. I feel a little bad, you know. That was a critical hit that, uh, you know, definitely helped me out significantly. Again, I don't know. I mean, if he had Cresselia and Talonflame in the back, you know, could Mega or could Primal Groudon have just swept at that point? I, I feel like I feel like it would have happened, so I wasn't too worried about it. As we break the 1600, which is cool, we're we're quickly climbing up the ranks, man. Quickly climbing up the ranks here. I want to face some some uh, good opponents. As we find Pliskin from California with a rating of 1557, Peru VGC. Okay, oh, Venusaur. Interesting. This is probably a, not a Mega Venusaur. Probably not, because he probably wants the Chlorophyll from Groudon. So this is this is very interesting. I haven't seen a Venusaur yet. Huh. I actually love Mega Venusaur. It's one of my favorite Megas to use in uh, previous formats. So, okay. So Venusaur, Primal Groudon, Xerneas, probably Mega Salamence, Cresselia, and Crobat. Um, I think this might be a good time for Lando. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, oh, 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 my opponent could easily lead Venusaur and Groudon and wreck some shop if I'm not careful. So I gotta, I gotta be careful about that. Oh no, I don't really know what to do, honestly. I don't know what to do here. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna want, we're gonna want Crobat here so we can get a, a Tailwind set up. We're gonna need Tailwind to counteract that Venusaur. I think Groudon is gonna be a really good matchup here. Um, assuming we're faster than his, we are timid 252, so that does help, kind of knowing that we're at the very worst going to speed tie, but still have to be a little careful about that, um, especially if he gets a Tailwind set up. And then, do we want Lando in here? Or do we want Xerneas, or, uh, Ferrothorn? I don't think Xerneas will really do too much, will it? I don't know, yeah, I don't feel like bringing it, especially against that Venusaur. I would like to have Lando, honestly, or, uh, sorry, Ferrothorn. I want to have Ferrothorn just in case... Somehow that Venusaur is kind of running uh, running havoc and just kind of putting everything to sleep with Sleep Powder because it does get Sleep Powder. So I'm going to bring Ferrothorn just in case for that uh, for that threat in particular. But I do have to be careful because if he has a Groudon, that's, yeah, see, he goes for the Venusaur Groudon lead as predicted. And this is okay. This is okay because we led Kangaskhan and Crobat. So now I can feel free to set up the Tailwind. However, however... This means my opponent gets a free Eruption, Precipice Blades, whatever on his Groudon. His Groudon doesn't have to worry about a thing, a single thing. That's not good. But, I mean, honestly, like I said, that, that matchup is really, that lead matchup is really solid. Uh, assuming he gets Sleep Powders, you know, he gets all that stuff um, to connect. You know, there's really not much we can do against it. So, I think what we'll do is go for... Oh man, what do I want to do here? I think I want to go for the Tailwind. I hope this Crobat's bulky enough to live in Eruption. I don't think it is. I don't think it's really possible to make it live in Eruption very easily. So we're just going to go for the uh, the Fake Out Tailwind. We'll definitely outspeed and get off a Tailwind at the very worst. And Kangaskhan should be able to live in Eruption. Uh, barely. Probably not very well, but that's okay. And then once Tailwind is set up, then we'll be the faster threats. We won't have to really worry about that Venusaur because it'll be plus two, but we'll also be plus two. So it'll be a fair fight at that point. So as long as we don't worry about getting put to sleep while also being able to outmaneuver this uh, Groudon. As he goes for the Protect, hello? Okay. Okay, thank you, sir, for the free Tailwind. All right. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. And Venusaur is not, uh, not too bulky, so 
it doesn't really appreciate that uh, that fake out either, which is really nice. Puts it into KO range for a lot of other options. We can easily take it out with double edge or something. So now this is what's really cool about uh, about um, Crobat is that it doesn't have any offensive EVs whatsoever. It's purely bulky, so it's it's very bulky despite not normally being very naturally bulky. But it gets Super Fang, which instantly takes away half of the opponent's remaining HP. So what we can do is we can Super Fang this Groudon. Should it connect, my opponent goes for a Protect on the Venusaur. That's a good play, you know, burning off the Tailwind turn. Should have thought about that, but again, you know, I don't really want to take any sleeps. Uh, sleep Powders, not feeling it. And we take that Groudon down to exactly half. Now Double Edge, obviously going to go into that. So my opponent goes for the Rock Slide. Misses Kang, which doesn't really matter for him, really. He's probably wanting that damage on the Crobat. Gonna do a decent chunk, puts me right into Citrus Berry range, I am carrying a Citrus Berry so we get a lot of that health back, don't even care at that point. That's pretty good, I'm feeling good about this. So now, uh, I'm wondering if I want to save, Wondering, I, I wonder if I want to save this, this, uh, this Crobat. I think we switch into Groudon here, I think we switch into Groudon, get that, that pressure off. He's not gonna go for a Precipice Blades or an Earth Power, especially onto that Crobat slot, he's not gonna Earth Power that. Um, at the very worst, he goes for a Rock Slide, which will do neutral damage, but that's okay. It's not going to do too much. So we're going to Primal Evolve. Now, we have two turns of Tailwind. We'll have one after this turn, so my opponent can easily protect and stall off that last turn of Tailwind, which could be an issue. We do have to kind of consider that, but uh, we'll, we'll just figure it out once it happens. So we switch into Groudon. As my opponent switches out Groudon, that's good, if anything, um, into Salamence. So Intimidate's going to go off here, but I think, like I said, Venusaur's kind of frail. I don't think it can live a double edge. I don't think it can, even at minus one. So let's see how much this does, unless he's like Citrus Berry or something. Easily going to take it out. <laughs> <laughs> These daggone critical hits, man. These daggone crits, I swear. That really shouldn't have mattered. I, I don't think that would have mattered. I feel like such a fraud right now. I feel like a fraud. I'm getting all these wins through crits. But again, you know, I really, I don't think that would have mattered. You guys can do the damage calcs if you want to check me on that. Um, probably a very standard 252 speed and special attack Venusaur if it's a, a chlorophyll based one. As my opponent now has Xerneas. So what do we want to do here? Um, well, the thing is right now, Salamence is the bigger threat because I have a Ferrothorn in the back. And I want to, I want to preserve that if possible. So I'm thinking what we do is actually, I feel like my opponent's going to, oh, I actually don't know right now. I'm thinking we switch Kang back out. For one, to get rid of that Intimidate. Two, to build us some fake out pressure later on. And, and three, just so we have it for later on that Salamence, I guess. And then I think we just go for an Eruption. Get strong damage onto both these guys, honestly. Although I probably need to preserve... Groudon as well for his uh, his Groudon, so I, I need to be a little careful here. I'm actually in kind of a tricky uh, situation, so he's going to Mega Evolve. Does he go for the Protect? I feel like if he wants to burn that turn of Tailwind to get Tailwind out of here, he's going to go for the Protect. As Xerneas goes for the Protect, interesting. Okay, that's that's not quite what I... Well, I guess that's fine. He could have set up a... Uh, he could have set up a Geomanche, which would have been really bad. So Eruption's going to go off onto the Salamence. It's going to do a solid chunk. Hello, that is... Ah, and he gets up a Tailwind. Okay, yep, yep. I was a little worried about that. I was a little worried about that. That's not the, the greatest news here. But, 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 but. Our Crobat does have decent HP left. So what could my opponent do here? Well, what my opponent could do is try and finish off that Crobat, which is most likely what he's going to want to do. So I'm thinking what we do is actually switch into Ferrothorn here. If this Salamence is physical, it's going to take Iron Barb's damage. Oh, no. Do we want to... Yeah, no. I think this is the better move. And then I think I'm going to go for another Eruption here. Xerneas can't do too much to, to damage it. I think Eruption's the safest play anyways because if it does take damage from Iron Barb's, it's going to finish it out even if we're at like half health or something, um, depending on what move the Salamence goes for. So I'm feeling like this is a pretty safe option. Fairly safe. Salamence goes for the double edge onto Ferrothorn. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. But that's actually going to take it out. Oh, that almost takes out my Ferrothorn. Crap. Okay, but that takes him out after recoil. So that's okay. That's good. But I'm not liking that because now my opponent goes for the Geomancy. So... The, the cool thing here, though, is that it's going to take a full single target eruption. 150 base damage. Granted, he is plus two special defense. But this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. So... Oh man, this is very scary though. Don't like seeing Geomancies just, you know, freely set up around here. So, Eruption is going to go off. How much is this going to do? 
Oh, it doesn't do that much, man. It doesn't do that much. And now Ferrothorn took so much damage, there's no way it can survive another hit. There's no way it can survive another hit. Especially when Groudon's on the field. Ay, uh, yeah, yeah. okay. How do we play this one out, man? How do we play this one out? Oh, goodness. All right, well... We still have Kangaskhan in the back for fake out pressure, so that's something we got to keep in mind. I almost kind of want to burn a turn right here of Tailwind. Wondering if that's the best option. Yeah, because I want to keep Groudon for the opposing Groudon. So let's just burn a turn of Protects here. Um, just double Protect. Try and get rid of that Tailwind for one more turn. I think it has two. I think it'll have one more turn of Tailwind after this turn goes off. So let's see what my opponent goes for here. Hopefully not a Geomancy predicting something. That'd be kind of funny. Hidden Power. Hidden Power. What would that be? Hidden Power Fire, maybe? Hidden Power Ground? I have no idea. Is my opponent, I think, went for the Eruption? I missed that. Probably an Earth Power, really. Um... Okay, so now what we do is we Gyro Ball. We're going to lose Ferrothorn, let's be real here. Um, honestly, a Moon Blast, and it looks like since he's got Hidden Power, he's going to be able to take out Ferrothorn regardless. So I'm thinking what we do is we actually switch into Crobat, hoping that he goes for an Earth Power here, and uh, we get a free switch in. That would be amazing. That would be perfect, because we want to preserve this Groudon as much as possible. Going to try and make sure that it has enough health to uh, withstand some attack and be able to hit back with something. So... Let's see. Oh, my opponent goes to the Dazzling Gleam. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Is it going to take out Ferrothorn, though? No, it doesn't! Oh, and he goes for the Eruption. Dang it. Yes, I should have seen that. I should have seen that. All right, all right. So Tailwind should end this turn. Tailwind should end this turn, but now we don't have Tailwind. Yeah, so his Tailwind ends, which is good. That's good. But now what is he going to do? Oh, my gosh. This is scary. This is really scary. I mean, we essentially have to risk a speed tie here. Now, I don't know if a plus two HP ground, if that's what the Xerneas has, I don't know if that's enough to Oko a Groudon. Part of me honestly doesn't think it is. I, I really don't think it is. So I have two options here. I could I could fake out the Xerneas or fake out the Groudon. I think faking out the Xerneas is the best in case he decides to stay, uh, stay offensive. Then we just get some nice fake out damage off onto it. And then we got to hope that we win a speed tie here on the Groudon. I think that's our best option. He may protect with Groudon as well. I really don't feel like risking that though. I don't want to risk that. Uh, not not feeling it. Not feeling it at all. So we're just going to go for this. We're going to go for the Earth Power. Xerneas goes for the Protect. Okay, so that's good that we didn't double target into that. Does this Groudon also go for the Protect? It does. Okay, yeah. So my opponent is just playing it smart. Burning off that Fake Out. I don't know what we do here. I don't know what we do. Oh, goodness gracious, man. This is scary. This is really scary. Okay, so a Moonblast can easily take out Kangaskhan, especially now that it's taking some chip damage. So he can easually just wipe off Kangaskhan. And then he could also wipe out Groudon with an Earth Power, assuming I'm not faster. So I think what we do is actually... I don't... Oh, man, I don't know. I feel like I need to Sucker Punch Groudon and also go for an Eruption. But I think that's... I, I don't think that's a good move. I really don't. I don't think that's a good move. Oh, man, but he could easily finish me off, so I think we kind of have to go for it. Because, like I said, he can outspeed and go for a uh, and go for a Moonblast and take out Kangaskhan. Hands down, I know he can. That thing is so strong when it's plus two. So let's go for the Sucker Punch. It's going to connect because he's going to go for an attack move, obviously. Does some good damage. Can an, uh, can an Eruption... Oh, he goes for Dazzling Gleam, so we might actually live this. Dang. Oh, we would have lived it. But we outspeed. Go for the eruption. How much is this going to do? Will it take out Groudon? Probably not. Oh, it takes out Groudon. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Let's think about this here. Let's think about this. So we can Sucker Punch. Because the Dazzling Gleam can't two-hit KO my Groudon. It can't two-hit KO my Groudon. What do we do? If we Sucker Punch, it should be into uh, into Flamethrower range. Flamethrower should be able to KO it. I don't think my opponent can really do anything else. Because then another Sucker Punch after that in the next turn, if he doesn't, if he goes for the single target for some reason, that should be enough to uh, to take it out. So I think we're I think we're okay. I think we're safe. Sucker Punch is going to connect. He goes for an attacking move. How much does this do? Does a smidge, man. Does a smidge, which means it's not going to KO it next turn. Oh, he goes for another Dazzling Gleam. Don't crit. Don't crit. Don't you dare crit. I know I've gotten a lot of crits today. Don't... Oh, 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 it was a crit. It was a crit, and we still live it. We still live it. Okay, let's go. Flamethrower's going to connect. This should take it out, man. 
Oh, yes, it does. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. That was awesome. Holy crap. That was good. That was good. Okay. So, my opponent playing a phenomenal game there. A phenomenal game. That was to the wire. Oh, man. I'm so glad we did that last match. I'm so glad we did three games this time. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you do, uh, if you did enjoy, please be sure to like this video and subscribe for more and uh, check out some other videos as well. But I think that's going to be it for today's episode. We did a lot. That was action packed. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out. Oh my goodness. <laughs>